What up? Hi, everyone. My name is Irene. I'm from a small town called Los Angeles, and this is my family. This is not my younger brother. This is me. Thank you, parents, for the wonderful haircut. I love you a lot. Really contributed to my overall self-esteem as an adult. So our world is changing fast. A technology that didn't exist decades ago are now in all of our pockets. Uh, information uh, is accessible instantly, and it's changed the way that we work. We can work remotely, we can Skype overseas, we can stay connected with Facebook, but it goes really a lot beyond that. Um, we've changed the expectations of our social life, relationships, work. We need as, an, as a society to lead differently, to mirror those changes that we have in life anyway. So what this means is we need innovative leadership models, cross-sector. There are three main areas that filter into what model we should be using as companies. The first, employees. The second, of course, what the employer wants. And then the third thing we need to be mindful of is what's trending. What is the market predicting? So let's start with employees. Starting with those with the most experience with time on the left, down the steps, these are the general age brackets. Highlighted in blue are the millennials. Yeah. What, what? So we are entering the workforce right now and for the next decade. I'm a millennial, there's three things that make us different than in generations before us. Technology, it defines us, how we express ourselves, how we communicate, how we interact with the world. The second is instability. Our entire cognitive lives have been around war, around a questionable economy. It's fragmented our loyalty and trust of politics, of companies, of religion. And the third is parents, is, is how we've been supported. Thanks to Xers and baby boomers not being so excited with some of their upbringing, you told us we were freaking awesome. <laughs> you gave us trophies, you gave us blue ribbons, and we really appreciate that. So what have we heard in our, in our growing up? We heard things like, find your passion, have work-life balance, you're talented, <laughs> know your strengths, you add value. Now, if you dig a little bit deeper than that, what do we really want? It comes to two big things. The first is fulfillment and purpose. We want to be able to connect what we do every day to something big. Maybe it's the company vision, maybe it's overall society. Second thing is voice and influence. We want to be able to impact decisions as well as the world around us. It's so really, really important to us. And it's not just us anymore, it's a lot of generations. We want to live life uh, more meaningfully. We want to contribute. We want to be a part of community. We want to, to feel heard and be listened to. So now when we, uh, when we think about this from an employee lens, there's a set of uh, preferences, context, for the, the employees that are coming in in the next decade. And that needs to factor in how we lead as companies. The two other lenses we're going to go through right now, the employer lens as well as the market. Employees, put in a full day's work. Get off Facebook. <laughs> Um, managers are from a different uh, generation than a lot of millennials. So the expectations are different, of image, of professionalism, of dress. So if you read between the lines, it's simple. A company needs effectiveness and results. A company needs hard workers. And a company needs its new employees to honor that a lot of people did a lot of work in order for you to come in that door and so that you could make your individual impact. Society's telling us that we're gonna have a lot of turnover. This leadership deficit is because a lot of boomers are staying in jobs longer, and that means millennials will be taking on leadership roles sooner. We need to be able to plan for this and build it into how we operate. So back to the models. We have employees with specific preferences that we need to keep happy. We have an employer that needs results, and then we need to be mindful of the market. The way that my company addresses these three areas is through um, aligning the desires of the employee so we, the employee wants voice, wants ownership, wants purpose. Aligning that with the outcomes of accountability, of leadership, of results. We do it through a shared leadership structure that keeps the mission, accountability, oversight all at the center. Working as a team, we have equality so that voice, um, voices is an ability. And then because we have role-specific responsibility areas, that allows for individual ownership. So companies win because results are at the center. Employees win because we have individuality as well as collaboration. Now the market wins because 
um, by staggering and predicting transitions in advance, we are addressing the high turnover. So what, this is a relevant and necessary shift in how we view and practice leadership, and I hope that you will consider it for your companies. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time.